So, be- because... Who did the intros last week? You start off... It was Mike's, I Mike's Corrections at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I know more about your podcast than you do. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't I, remember. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, that's right. It was me because I... I I confuse conviction with confliction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll let you. Yeah. This is As Yet Undecided with your conflicted host, Mike and Sophie, with special guest, Arat. Hi, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm excited. Well, yeah. Um, and firstly, how was your week, guys? It's been good. I got a lot of things done. I'm going to Wellington next week. Ooh. Ooh. The ca- the Kelpie capital of New Zealand. Is it though? I don't know. It's the hipster capital of New Zealand. Oh yeah, I, I've heard about that. And apparently trench coats are a thing. Yeah, yes. it, it is. Very much so. And second place is Auckland, mainly because we have a slightly better coffee culture than, than Wellington. <laughs> Uh, Those Wellingtonians might not like to hear that. Yeah. Oh, I'm or sorry. Pretty, pretty much anybody who's not an Aucklander would not like to hear it, have Auckland be at the top. Yeah, like me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say there's a friendly rivalry between the hipsters of Wellington and Auckland. Especially in terms of the coffee culture around Auckland. But let's talk about it, actually, because I'm a little bit more au fait with the coffee culture in Auckland than in Wellington. Mainly oh. because I'm ill-traveled. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, I know I, I know that we are recording at a, at a woman's hostel, yeah. but you forgot to talk about somebody's week. My week? Yes, oh, my week. <laughs> my, you mean my week? We're just empowering the women and putting everybody else down. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> thanks, but thanks, guys. I, it sees how much how much you really care, eh? <laughs> well, you forgot my week as well. Oh my god, we only talked about the guests. Oh, I feel week. so special, yeah. you guys. Yeah. But, uh, Actually, now let's talk about my week first yeah. because yeah. I'm, I, I've got something else to talk about with you. Um, yeah, my week's been pretty. It's been stressful. I've been eating way more chocolate than I should. Dark chocolate? Of course. Yeah. Anything, so... anything over seventy percent is fine. Anything under seventy percent, it's crap. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's just that I prefer over seventy percent. It always surprises me how little. Cocoa, there is, and like even milk chocolate. Like, yeah. I thought yeah, milk chocolate would 30%. already be like 70 or something. It's a bit, uh, yeah, milk chocolate is about 30, um, white chocolate is about 10, I think. But anyway, tune in for tune in to Sophie's Corrections next week to find out the cocoa contents of actual chocolate. <laughs> 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 yeah, anyway, how's your week, Mike? Yeah, it's 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 been pretty strange this week because of um, of future podcasts and leading up to me turning a year older yeah, and, and trying to organise my trip back home for my nephew's birthday because we share the same birthday. Oh, and maybe we should actually put an announcement. Next week's podcast will be recorded on a Wednesday, not a Friday, which means I think the schematics might change a little bit, but you'll still get this podcast at the exact same time. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And um, for, for context, um, our guest today... Erin. Yeah. She went to the International School of Bangalore, is that correct? Yes. Yes. You graduated from McGill University, is that correct? For undergrad, yes. Yeah. She's illustrious, put it this way. And now she is barking on her master's at the University of Auckland in Geology. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So how much coffee does that take? Um, here's the thing, I didn't actually... The way that I've, I've consumed coffee over my undergraduate career is very different. Yeah. So for the first one and a half years, there was no caffeine. Yeah. yeah. And then I started going to Tim Hortons, which is a coffee chain in Canada. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, I was going to say it's like Starbucks. Like, it, I just mean it's everywhere. But it's She's cheap. Canadian, that's why she's so nice. No, I'm not Canadian, but you know, <laughs> their ways are rubbed off on me, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so I would just drink like terrible... You know, chain store coffee. Add a lot of sugar. Yeah. With a sugar thing. Just to... You murdered your coffee! What? Uh, you murdered yeah. your coffee! Oh, well... Uh, I, I don't know. It was it was already dead to begin with. <laughs> so... Oh, um, oh, yeah. So how's your, how are you finding the coffee culture in Auckland, then? So, okay, that's 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 the thing. that uh, That's pretty interesting. Um, so, well, the only other place where I've had, like, really tried, like, different cafes was mm-hmm. in, when I was in Canada, in Montreal. Yeah. And so I always keep comparing how things are there versus here. Yeah. And, like, the one thing that I noticed is that, so, um, a lot of, like, whether you get, like, a regular size or a large size, oftentimes your drink will just be double shot. Yeah. yeah. So, like, they charge you extra for the large size, but you're just paying extra for the milk. Yeah. Which is kind of sad. But 
Um, hey, you have, to pay for, you have to pay for the cow's farts. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, externalities <laughs> of the cow's farts. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... Yeah. But yeah, like back in Canada, so like a small would have been a single shot and a yeah. large would have been a double shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like an increase in price is just like to milk plus your coffee. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. And also I noticed that like New Zealand loves their espresso. Yeah. Yes. So, you know. And, flat, a, and the flat whites, which he invented, by the way. Screw yes. you Australians. Not Australia. I will I will root for New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah. And uh, so I, remember, I noticed that in Canada, like if. Most people just get like a regular, like a filtered coffee, yeah, or like a brewed coffee, and that would just be like it, it would be like maybe half the price of a uh, espresso coffee, yeah. But here, it's often like espresso is cheaper than getting a filtered coffee, mm. and I wonder why, because you know you're getting your coffee from the same parts of the world, and it has to travel the same distance in New Zealand, so I don't know what like what makes it different. If I don't know if it's just because it's not that common here, so it's worth, like, it costs more for them to make it in the first place? Mm-hmm. Hmm, that, that's a good question, because it, it may be due to the the batch comparison, because, mm. like, with, you know, with roasting, you'd get a, a large quantity of it, but with filter coffee, you'll get the smaller version, therefore it will cost more. That may be a reason why it may cost more. Mm-hmm. Could be, could be. Yeah. Why are espresso so expensive in Canada, then? I wouldn't say it's, oh, that's another thing. So, I mean, I guess maybe because this New Zealand is so far, because New Zealand is so far away from the rest of the world. Yeah. I think it's, in general, coffee here is a lot more expensive than, let's say, the US and Canada. But like, you said espresso costs more than filtered coffee, even though filtered coffee yeah. actually produces less coffee per bean. Well, okay, so that I think, so if you want to look at how much caffeine there is, yeah, I will, I generally look at it in terms of, like, the liquid, so, like, per, like, if you have a 30 ml espresso shot versus 30 ml filter coffee, yeah. your espresso will have obviously like much more caffeine than just your filter. But one cup of like a flat white apparently has less caffeine than a cup of filter. It's because we add more milk, a lot of milk. Uh-huh. Actually, in, well, saying, in saying that, that's actually a good, another good starting point. What, what kind of milk is best for a coffee, in your opinion? Well, I'm not really a coffee expert. I'm just happy people are drinking coffee. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but like, I, the I preferences, of course. Oh, well, I, I mean, I can drink. I know a lot of people will drink soy because they like the taste or because they can't have regular milk. Yeah. Or they'll have almond milk, which is fine. But, like, I, I can, I'm okay with normal milk. I also don't want to pay, I don't like the others enough to pay extra for them. So I just drink regular full-fat milk or whatever they have at the cafe. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. uh, was it um, sometime last year... There was a cafe that was strictly only serving it in full cream milk. Yeah, I think there are even uh, there are two that I've been to this year, or well, yeah, and they still they have the same concept, but that's because they say it's because um, their coffee doesn't taste as good with other milk. Yeah. And like you know, if you ask them, they'll explain it to you. They'll tell you why it is that way, and they'll give you other types of drinks you can have, or like they'll offer you filter coffee or a tea. So there are other options if you're not a full fat, full or like a regular milk person. Because. We went out for coffee yesterday. Mm-hmm. We went to home in K Road. Yep. And the, the one thing that struck me that compared to other coffee places that I've been to, they actually gave a description of where the, coffee, where the beans are sourced from. Mm-hmm. And that's the part that got me the most. And you also noted that I had an inquisitive look while I was reading the menu. Yep, you... You looked, I thought you were shocked, but you said you were just perplexed. Yeah. It's a very hipster thing to do, actually. It's um, we, we hipsters really would like to know where our coffee comes from because of a whole ethics thing. Yep. We want to know that our coffee's been ethically sourced, we want to know it's single source, and we want to feel good about our coffee, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what, like, nowadays they're calling that specialty coffee. So home mm-hmm. is a specialty coffee house. Yeah. And I know in, uh, when I was in Canada, they used this term, like, it was called a uh, third wave coffee. Which yeah. is pretty similar. Like you know, they care about where their coffee is coming from. They make sure that you know people who are working at the farm they all get paid properly and things like that. So yeah. they really like make an effort to make sure it's fair for everyone. Yeah, yeah. this past that seems to be a huge thing about us millennials. We're probably the first generation to really, really care about um, where our stuff comes from. I think it's good. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know that's that high time. Yeah, there's still. I mean, I would say there's still a lot of people who don't, but there are. I mean, 
Definitely, like compared to before, people are paying more attention. Yes. And I think obviously because we have internet access, it's easy to learn about these things and just to like, you know, trace back where things are coming from. Yes, and I think this is the first time in generations that um, companies actually have to really start looking into um, their ethics because that's what we're demanding now for the first time in ages. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah, yeah. for sure. You, you Otherwise, you'll get boycotted. Yes. Maybe your company will be shut down. Yes, for the most random of reasons. What's... Why do you say, uh, the, what has happened that makes you say that? Uber, uh, well there was this, this is a strange case of boycotting in Uber because they managed to do surge prices to um, JFK airport because people wanted to go there to protest. For the, the when Donald Trump was elected president and all that? For when oh, Donald the, ban, the travel, the ban, travel yeah, ban, the first wave of travel bans. And so that wasn't really Uber's fault because it was the computer that did it. But as people got really pissed off with Uber, so they say, oh my goodness, we're going to boycott Uber from now on and, and we're going to have Lyft. Evidently, they didn't do their research properly because one of the founders of Lyft is a Trump advisor. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. So you can say that Lyft had committed an even bigger sin than Uber because while well, Uber, they just their only sin was neglecting to see what their computer is doing. Lyft? Wow, okay. Well, we'll go. We're going back to coffee. Yeah. Um, I I know Sophie that you're not a big coffee drinker, but you do like the whole specialty teas thing. Oh yes, and hot chocolate. Yes, but um, what what is your taste like? Like for me, for example, I like to go very cheap. Yes. For home, but then when I'm away, I always like to go with the specialties because hey, it's a treat. Right. I'm special tea all the way through. Yeah. Special tea. Special uh, tea. Yes, yes. But I'm special tea all the way through. Um, there's this fantastic little tea shop. By the way, we're not sponsored by them. They're too important. <laughs> <laughs> there's a special little tea shop over in Mount Eden called Chapters, and they stock hun probably like about a hundred different types of tea. So they so they source from a huge range of um companies. So like, uh, what's it? Tea Time and Honey and Sun seems to be their two biggest suppliers, but they also have some teas from California, some, yeah, this iced wine teas from California for some reason. It's weird. It's weird. And also, they also have Teaser. Teaser is green tea grown in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. It's, hmm. it's weird. So, I, yeah. so what about you, Arat? Are you... Special TT all the time, or do you have selective when you're home or away? Hmm, that's a hard. Well, cause when I'm like when I'm at home, wait. So when you say home, where exactly do you mean? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> what, 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 in your place of residence? Okay. That's what I was meaning. <laughs> I would say if it was like a travel thing, or the, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, at home. So actually, when I'm like, if I'm just if I need some caffeine when I'm at home, I will drink tea. I don't. Always, I have some instant coffee, but I don't really like to drink that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm fine with tea. I think it's like I, I enjoy tea. Favorite brand, favorite type. English breakfast. Ah yes. English breakfast. I'm yes. Okay, I, I, I'm okay with most black teas. I also like green tea. I love I love black tea. My favorite is Honey and Sons in Paris, which is the variation of the English breakfast. Okay. I don't know enough about tea to decide big variations. Oh, yes. I'll bring this in one time, probably. Okay. It's I'll really good. No, well, what do you think about the obligations that a, um, a oh. coffee place should have? Yeah. Like, like take, for instance, Wi-Fi, etc., to, to entice consumers. It has to be beer-friendly. Okay. I think... No, that was a joke, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, something that... So, when I first arrived in New Zealand, I did notice that most cafes don't have Wi-Fi. Mm. And I was surprised, but then, um, I mean, I wish they had Wi-Fi. I, I like, I love working in cafes. That's why I started going to cafes and drinking coffee just yeah. to do work, pretty much. Um, but I did notice a thing where um, I was reading an article about how the U.S. and Canada are very, like, they're very productivity oriented, whereas people in New Zealand are more laid back. So they would go to cafes just to relax, eat some food, yeah. talk to their friends, maybe chat with their favorite baristas. Whereas it's it is like a part of the cafe culture in North America to go to ca like um, coffee shops and do work. Yeah. So I guess given that it makes sense that places here don't have Wi-Fi, 
mm-hmm. which is why I like home so much because they do have Wi-Fi and it's a nice little, you know, place where I can go be productive or just you know relax with my computer. Yeah, there's, there's a place you could probably love to go. Um, I'm a member of the Auckland Art Gallery, and they have a members lounge, which is basically a little home slash executive area with a small kitchenette. It's it's got Wi-Fi, it's got everything that a corporate might want, and yet in a homish like setting. And what do you have to do to be a member? Pay forty dollars. But it's a fantastic place to go, and the Auckland Art Gallery is so beautiful, though. Right, yeah. yeah, I've only been there once, and I, I do want to go back and see some of the new exhibitions. But yeah, yeah. Um, you can well, you, or you can join as a guest of a member. Okay. For fifteen dollars, I'm a member, so you can probably join for fifteen if you wish. So fifteen for the first year, and then forty. Fifteen for, the for no, no no fifteen for as long fifteen for every year as I, I am a member. Oh. As a, because you'll be you be okay. you be under as guest or family. Okay, that yeah, I guess the whole family that that makes sense. I think, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and and then because of you know so, some baristas are, are hired and fired by different um, coffee places. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about brand recognition for versus baristas recognition? Brand recon. What do you mean? Coffee place versus the barista that makes the coffee. So, okay, well, if you take, like, you know how, let's say, in the US, for example, like, a lot of people will swear by their Starbucks coffee. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I mean, it's just an example. Not the best example, but, like, they don't care so much about who is making their coffee, just the big name. Or, like, if, you know, if there are other coffee chains, people will stick to their chain. Glory Jeans. Yes. Some people will stick to Glory Jeans. I mean, I, I like them, but I honestly don't see the point of the brand, really, sometimes. I do think so. Um, I guess another thing that I've noticed since coming to Auckland is the different roasteries. Mm. Yeah. So, like, a roastery will obviously they'll have their own cafe where they'll sell their coffee beans or, like, you know, make coffee using their beans, and then they'll send or sell their beans to other cafes and restaurants so that they can use it to make coffee. Robert Harris, right? Robert Harris? Is that a... Roast- are they are they yeah, 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 Robert yeah. Harris. They both, they both make their own beans plus their a cafe yeah. chain. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so that's, a, like, a, a couple, I guess... So, I mean, from what I've noticed, like, there are certain roasteries whose coffee I prefer over others. Oh, yeah. So if I, if I find a new cafe that happens to have coffee from that place, I will, I tend to want to go there. Yeah. But I am also, like, open to trying new cafes. And I do agree that, like, so not, maybe not so much the way they're making it, because most baristas I've, I've encountered at um, these type of, like, specialty coffee shops, at mm-hmm. least, they're, they're, you know, they're, well, they're experienced, they make, you know, they're, they make their co- your coffee pretty well most of the time. But I also find that the way they, how much they interact with you and how they behave also affects whether I want to go back to the cafe. I see. So like how friendly they are, how chatty they are, and like if you keep going back and you know you're like you, you become a regular, they know your order, things like that. Yeah. I think that's important. If, if you talk to them about how you like your order, mm-hmm. like, like take for instance like temperature gauge to see what you, what temperature you'd like to have your coffee straight away, mm-hmm. or if you're driving, have it in the car rest a while before you drink. Yeah. For example. It's nice when they remember that. There's a little coffee stand on just down on Beach Road that I used to go to when I lived closer to that side. Yeah. Um, and the guy, the barista, he's also the owner, he gives you a discount if you're a university student. Oh, nice. Yes. So, like, a small coffee, which is a double shot, is only $3. And oh, wow. And then a medium is, like, three forty, and a large, which is a triple shot, is $4. And that's a lot. It's a big drink. Like, yeah. I cannot drink that much. So he, like, me and a friend would go there often before we headed to uni, and, like, he would remember our orders. And I, but I, but I moved from that area, so I haven't been back in like two months. But I oh. went there, I think just last week. Yeah. And he saw me, and he remembered my order. Yeah. How about coffee art? Do you appreciate coffee art? Like the foam, the foam art thing. Yeah, the foam top? art. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think. Uh, I mean, most places will give you like a heart or like a leaf or something like that. The. But it's nice when they do something a little different. They're like, True. oh, this is cool. The fern leaf is the most popular because you know silver fern. New Zealand, yes. Yes. I think we went out for coffee yesterday. I think it was like a Wi-Fi signal that they put in there. Was it? Oh, yeah. I think I think it's supposed to be like leaves, sort of like a stem in the middle and leaves, but I know sometimes it ends up looking like the thing. Yeah. Wi-Fi. Or it might have been a Wi-Fi signal. Who knows? Wi-Fi. I would, I would appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi signal. Yeah. Sorry. And, and, and because since we have the special guest and, and she is special for a large amount of reasons she is part of the community which is the lgbt community 
We will not be speaking too much about this because we don't know that much, and we would rather not be hazed. No, I mean you can you can join in. If there's if I find that there's something that you're saying that isn't is offensive, in quotation yeah. marks, I will you know I'll I'll help you out with that. Like no worries. Yeah, we were but honestly we. Were I think I mean political correctness. Like I there I think there should be a limit to that. Like yeah. you need to be able to speak your mind freely. Yeah. Yeah, but still. I want to become a lawyer. I don't want my career ruined before I even start. Maybe you should put out a disclaimer that, like, you don't mean <laughs> to yeah, I may, anyone. Well, the thing is, am I part of the community? Because I'm asexual. I, yeah, of yeah. course. Okay, so yeah. here's... The, I don't know who told you you aren't, but you know the full form of LGBT is much longer than just LGBT. It's so long, I may as well say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> yeah, or just... just yeah. I just call it the queer community. Like, yeah. that's so much easier. Now, because... Since you're more, uh, more travelled than than I am, um, can you can you talk about the the differences of acceptance in the community in, in certain locales? So, like, I guess the only the three places that I can really comment on are Auckland, and then where I was in Canada, Montreal, and then back home in India. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say that the least amount of acceptance I've seen was probably in India. Yeah. I mean, it's like, um, I, like, there are people, it's funny, because I was telling, I was just talking to another Indian friend of mine, he's sort of, like, from a small town, Mm -hmm. um, and I was telling, I was sort of, I guess, coming out to him, uh, if you want to say that, and he was like, oh, I didn't know there were gay people in India, I mean, you know, gay people are everywhere, they might not talk about it, but they're there. Um, so I I just Oh my god, the Kama Sutra actually had a section about gay sex. Probably. Yeah, they did, they did. Oh, mind you, they also have a section about how to teach starlings to sing, so... It's a, the Kama Sutra is not just about sex, it's, a, it's literally, a, it's about, uh, it's a relationships book. And it's about how to make your life better, and how to become a more rounded person. So this is part about s- teaching starlings how to sing, and there's probably part about cooking, I think. It's not just about sex, it okay? Is about, yeah, it's about life in general. It's so. about life in general, I mean, it's not, I mean, surely, s- what, life isn't just made out of sex, okay? I mean... I guess that's a sexy bit that people people like to talk about, but <laughs> honestly, guys, the Kama Sutra is not as um, exciting as you'd like it to be sometimes. I have a little sidebar for you guys. Um, yeah. So when I was like 13 years old, I saw like a little billboard advertisement, Yeah. and it was for condoms, and it was called Kama Sutra. And like, I didn't really like, so the thing in India is you can't have like very obvious advertising. Yeah. So like adults will know what it is, but as a 13 year old, I was like, hey, what's that? So I asked my dad. I was like, oh, what's that? And then he just looked at it. He went like, condom. And then he walked away. And I was like, oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> because there's probably some sort of of stigma that comes across about trying to tell the kids about sexual issues. Yeah. When they don't feel like that they're ready to tell you. Yeah. Mm. Especially, I find that, uh, at least like in developed countries and Western cultures, people are more open. You have sex education. That's So that helps to some extent. Whereas in India, I did not have that. Yeah. So like when, Taboo. yeah. So like when I was, uh, I guess in primary school, um, we used to live outside India for a while, and like we were in, in Ghana, and there our nurse like talked to all the girls about puberty and getting their periods, and yeah, and also a little bit about sex, and so then I just went home and I just told my mom, oh, this is what we learned today, and so my mom knew, okay, that I knew a little bit about it, and like sometimes like she'll vaguely bring things up, but not give me a direct thing, like a direct talk about it, um, which I think is funny but I guess I hopefully she knows by now that I know there is a, yes there is this mis- I think this came from this misconception that if you teach people about sex they'll try it mm. nah. Nah, uh, I think it's it, mis- it came no well you know the misconception okay well it came, came through yeah I yes. think it's also just because yeah. you know being sexual is just or you know owning your sexuality or want to try things is, it's not always seen as a very positive thing mm. so yeah. There's that. All right. So yeah. Also, um, so yeah. I think my experience Montreal versus Auckland. So I was Montreal was sort of when I first started. I guess when I first thought about these things and when I first started telling a few people, but I wasn't like really out. Like now, I'm a lot more like vocal about it. Mm. But I do think people in Montreal are much more. Like I mean, Auckland. You know, people. Same-sex marriage is legal in New Zealand. You have the Pride Parade. Which it surprised me. Some people who live far, far away in the suburbs don't know about that. Mm. Well, um, I do. Um, I don't like Fraser, so I just went to the Herald uh, Gardens. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Um, but I, I mean, I also like. I think. I just. I think uh, maybe it's because of the university I went to in undergrad was a very like, 
radical slash hipster slash, you know, very, like, politically correct, safe yes. space kind of university. <laughs> yeah. And I think people, like, talked about these things a lot more yeah. compared to um, Auckland University. Um, I tried to go to one of those, uh, like, queer space sort of events at Auckland Uni, but it was all undergrads. <laughs> and they were the very, like, immature kind. I mean, you know, they were nice, but... I think I think that they assume that and oh, oh, really you guys are undergrads. Sorry, but you guys are no, no. you're a lot more mature than those people. Yeah, it's probably because they as they assumed if you're post grad you wouldn't have had your life sorted out by now. Maybe you had a partner. Maybe you know yeah. you know have kids and things like that. Because I do know a lot of you know I do know one or two queer post grads, but they don't feel like going to those spaces because they already feel comfortable. They already have partners. They probably already have kids. They already yeah. have a career. Therefore, they cannot be bothered going to those spaces. Yeah, I guess it is more yeah. for like meeting people. It's, and it's to make you it's make you feel more comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But I think, so I am a part, so on meetup.com, yeah. I am a part of this Auckland, it's called Auckland Queers. Yeah. Um, and they have weekly events, they have like, you know, they have a thing on Fridays called Queers and Beers, and like, yeah. they have like reading groups, and like dinner events, and like, I've, I yeah. really want to go to a lot of them, but like, I feel shy going by myself. Mm. So Aww. I try to get people to go with me, but nobody wants to go. Oh, oh no. Um, maybe someday I'll finally go. So, um, do you th- so do you think Montreal and Auckland, which was more open, do you think? I think Montreal. Montreal, yeah. 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 Auckland is more like chill. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I've met anybody who's homophobic or transphobic or something like that in Auckland, but I think people in Montreal were just more inclusive. Yeah. And when talking about, like, you know, if you're talking about dating, they would just, they would talk about it as if it was for everyone and not just, you know, heteronormative, in a heteronormative sense. Yeah. Well, I must be, li- I must live in my own liberal paradise because I don't, because I assume that as well, sexuality is just who you are, who cares, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we have a more su- maybe we have a more subdued um, attitude towards it. But our ones were more like, who cares? Okay. Yeah. You know. All right. This is, has been the As the Undecided podcast with us with our conflicted hosts Mike and Sophie featuring Arat. Yes, and we would like to thank you, Arat, for joining us as our first guest. Alumnus Arat. And thank you for having me. It was fun. Good yeah. talk. Good talk. Yes. Yeah, sorry for all the convolutions, but I'm afraid that's kind of normal. And um, would you like to do a mutual plug? For yourself? I don't really have a podcast. But, but you do have a Tumblr people you want you might want people to follow. What is your Tumblr? You can follow my Instagram. Yeah. You know, I just post photos of coffee and like buildings in, in Auckland that I like and oh, you're some hipster. street photography. You're a hipster. Etc. Yep, um you... it's Aratrika G. Yes. So hopefully Mike and Sophie will add that in the yeah, description. Just, just it's a bit message us, please. Spell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I am your newest follower on Instagram. Oh yeah, I saw that, and then I forgot to follow you back because I was half asleep. Uh, uh, it's okay. But I will do that. Yeah, and you could um, contact me on the Marnus, T H E M R N U S on all platforms. I am Sophie nine seven zero nine on all platforms apart from Instagram. The other. Because, you know, you know about the other Sophie by now, hopefully. But before we leave, um, you can contact the podcast matters on itself on as your undecided podcast at gmail.com or AYU podcast on Twitter, Tumblr and Facebook. And um, prepare for the birthday podcast next week. Oh, yes. Yay. We're going to be talking about wrestling. <laughs> Have a good week, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.